Hi guys, my name is Tiffany and welcome back to Upcycled by Tito where I take all forgotten items and give them a new life. It is my birthday, so I decided to do something a little fancier. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I turned this dress that I got for $1 into this birthday look. So this is actually two separate pieces. It's a corset top and then a pencil skirt. I wanted to make separates because I just wanted something a little more wearable, but when worn together, look like one cohesive dress. I've been seeing a ton of DIY corset tutorials online, so I decided to make one as well in my attempt to stay young and trendy. I'm feeling a little bit extra and did a second upcycle, so I'll also be showing you how I turned this dated gown into this second birthday look. Let's get on with this tutorial. You'll need a sewing machine, overlocker, iron and ironing board, two thrifted dresses, interfacing, a large sheet of paper, a ruler, fabric shears, sewing pins, thread, an invisible zipper, fabric marker, measuring tape, steel boning, needle nose pliers, and a seam ripper. Here is the game plan. I'm going to be removing and discarding the top portion of the dress. From the bottom part of the dress, I'm going to be making a midi length pencil skirt with a slit down the front on the left side. The back of the skirt will look something like this. From the top portion of the dress, we're going to build a corset that looks something like this. I'll go into more details later. I'll also be adding an invisible zipper on the side of the top and the back of the skirt. Let's take a quick look at the dress. It has an off-the-shoulder design and this lace applique detail. The rest of the dress is pretty basic. It has a slit and a zipper closure in the back. Like I mentioned earlier, I got this at the Goodwill for $1 and it still had the tags on. I'm gonna start on the skirt because I'm gonna need a larger amount of fabric from the original dress to make the skirt and I didn't wanna make the corset and then not have enough fabric for a matching skirt. So I'm thinking of a really 50s inspired pencil skirt that's like midi length and for a little extra va va voom, I'm gonna add a slit along the left leg. I'm gonna be using this skirt pattern that I made. If you guys watched my mini dress upcycle from a couple of weeks ago, I have a step-by-step -step tutorial on how I drafted a pattern to make a fitted skirt. I'm gonna link that down below if you guys want to check that out but for now I'm going to be using this pattern as a base and then I'm just gonna make some minor modifications to make this pencil skirt. The first thing I'm gonna do is cut the dress. I've pinned the hem together because I will be cutting the front and back pieces at the same time. From the hem I measure 33 inches and make a mark with my fabric marker. I quickly realized that I couldn't see the marks that I was making because the color of the fabric is so dark so I used some pins instead. Continue to measure and mark across the width of the dress and then cut. Now that we've cut our dress in half, I wanted to show you guys that the front of the skirt is made out of three panels. The seams are right there. And the back of the skirt is made out of four panels. So I'm actually going to have to seam rip this entire thing because I want to add fusible interfacing. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm really going for that 1950s structured look, but this step is completely optional. If you don't want to do that, you can just take in the skirt from the sides. Here are the three panels that make up the front of the skirt. I'm gonna start on this panel and then work my way across. The pattern that I'm using has a half inch seam allowance, but I only want a quarter inch seam allowance for the skirt. So I'm placing my pattern so that it hangs half an inch off the edge of the first panel. Pin your pattern to secure. Now, using my ruler as a guide, I mark a diagonal line with my pins from the hem to the widest part of the skirt to create that pencil skirt shape. Cut out your new pattern. I'm going to be leaving the center panel the way that it is, so let's move on to the last panel. Using the first pattern piece that I made, I'm going to place them right side spacing and then pin to secure. Now cut. You should now have three pieces that look like this that will make up the front of the skirt. Moving on to the back of the skirt, I did want to quickly mention that I did end up seam ripping these panels after I cut out this pattern. I was relatively happy with the shape and size of the back panel, so this will be significantly easier than the front. I placed my pattern along the side seam, pinned, and then cut to create a smaller waist. Then, I placed this piece right sides facing on the second panel, pinned, and cut. The pieces for the back of your skirt should look like this. So I only have white interfacing with me and I just realized that it's gonna look really, really bad because I have that slit in the front. So you're gonna be able to see the white through the slit and it's just gonna look so bad. So now I have to go to the store to get some black, I don't know, hopefully they have navy interfacing, 
but it's probably gonna be too dark by the time I get home, so I will continue this tomorrow. I was slightly annoyed that I had to drive all the way to the store to pick up the interfacing, but I did find these free chairs on the way home, which I promptly put in the car, so it wasn't all that bad. So I woke up way later than I was meant to today because I drank way too much last night because we just found out that Broadway is now closed till June of next year, which is just... <sighs> also, my roof is being completely redone right now. So I'm gonna do more voiceover stuff so that we can avoid this. I've got my interfacing, so now I'm gonna iron this onto the skirt and then we can start putting the pieces together. After cutting and ironing on the interfacing, here is what the front of the skirt looks like. I'm only going to sew this seam to this point to create the slit. Here are the pieces for the back of my skirt with the interfacing ironed on. I'm also going to be adding an invisible zipper in the center. I just finished sewing the skirt together and I wanted to show you guys that I also added a waistband. I do have a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do this in a previous video and I'll link that down below. Here is the zipper in the back, and this is what the skirt looks like on. I actually really like it styled with this t-shirt, maybe with some sneakers for a more casual look, but I'm really happy with how this turned out, so let's move on. Here is my completed skirt. I did want to mention to you guys that I ended up using the wrong side of the fabric. The right side of the fabric was a little bit too shiny for me, and I was a little nervous that it would make my dress look really costumey, so that's why I opted to use the wrong side. Now that the skirt's done, let's move on to the main event, which is the corset top. So initially, I was gonna draft my own pattern, but there are so many free resources online that I thought I'd take advantage of that. While I was doing research for this top, I came across this YouTuber. Her name is Kiana. She makes amazing sewing tutorials. And not only does she have a DIY corset tutorial, she also has the corset pattern available for free. And that's what I'm gonna be using for this upcycle. This is what her pattern looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and link her tutorial that includes the link to this pattern down below if you guys wanna check that out. I've gone ahead and printed and cut out the pattern pieces. This pattern is based on her size and she is smaller than I am, so I am gonna make a couple of modifications. I'm gonna be adding three quarters of an inch to the center front and I'm also going to be adding half an inch to the center back. This will give me an additional two and a half inches of width. With those modifications, I traced out the pattern onto some muslin and I made a mock-up. I have the mock-up on and I think it actually fits me pretty well. Um, I also put on the skirt because since I want these two pieces to look like one cohesive dress, I needed to put it on so that I could see what adjustments I needed to make. So for me, this top is a little bit too short because I want it to cover the skirt just a little bit so it looks like one dress. So I'm gonna be adding an inch of length all the way around. And for me, this I think also sits a little bit too low. So I'm gonna be adding an inch as well to give it a little more height. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I modified the original pattern to make a pattern that fits me better. On a large sheet of paper, I start by drawing my center front line. From that line, I measure three quarters of an inch and draw a parallel line. I place the original pattern on the second line and trace out this side. Now, using the pattern as a guide, I extend the bottom and the top. From the original top point, I measure one inch up and make a mark. I do the same for the bottom. Using the original pattern, I trace the bottom and extend that line to the new center front. Repeat this with the top. This is my modified center front piece. Moving on to the cup pieces. I want this side to stay the same, but I'm going to extend this line up so that it matches the new center front pattern. Start by tracing out this pattern piece. Now, place the second cup piece, making sure that it meets this point of the first cup piece. Trace out the pattern. Again, using the pattern as a guide, extend this line up. Measure and mark at one inch. Now, I'm freehanding a slight curved line between these two points. Extend this line up to separate the two pieces. Here are the modified cup pieces. Moving on to the side front piece, trace all the sides except for the bottom. Again, using the original pattern, use it as a guide to extend this line down. I use my ruler to extend the side seam and then measure and mark at one inch on both sides. Trace out the bottom and you have your modified pattern. Repeat the steps for the side front piece on the two back pieces. I also added half an inch to the center back. Cut out the new pattern and you should have something that looks like this. Here are all my mock-up pieces ready to be sewn. 
I have mock up 2.0 on and I also put on the skirt again just to make sure that everything sits nicely in the way that I want it. It now covers the waistband so hopefully it'll give the illusion that it is just one dress. I know this is a really tedious step making mock-ups, but now I have a pattern that I know fits me perfectly and I can use this again in other projects. Now using the modified pattern that I made, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the pieces I need for the top. I start off by removing this top section. Then I seam ripped all the pieces and gave everything a good press. Once I seam ripped everything, I realized that I had to make another modification to my pattern. The piece of fabric that I had was too small for me to cut out the pieces I needed for my center front. I modify my pattern by keeping the same measurements but making it three smaller pieces. So I'll cut these two pieces out of this fabric and then I'll cut this panel from a different section. I cut out my pattern pieces on the fusible interfacing. Then I mapped out my interfacing onto my fabric and once I had all the pattern pieces figured out, I ironed it on. Here are all the pieces cut out for the shell and the lining ready to be sewn. Since I'm inserting an invisible zipper on the side, instead of a lace-up closure, I left one of the side seams open. Now pin these two pieces right sides facing and sew all the way along the top. I just finished sewing the lining to the shell and this is what it looks like. I also went ahead and inserted the invisible zipper along the side. Now because I added interfacing to my garment, it actually is already pretty structured, so I'm only going to be adding boning to the front of the garment. The boning that I'm going to be using is this flexible steel boning. It comes with these caps on the top, and this is just to prevent the steel from ripping through your garment. I got my boning from Etsy and I just used some needle nose pliers to cut them even though it was way more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Using the seams from each panel as a guide, I basically just sewed two straight stitches along each seam to create the channel that are going to be the new homes for our boning. Now I'm just going to insert the boning into the top. To finish off the bottom of our top, we are going to make my janky version of bias tape. The reason I say that is because I only have this tiny little piece of fabric left, so I can't cut strips on the bias. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut two one inch strips, sew them together to form one large strip, and then make a faux bias tape. I've sewn those two strips together, and then with my iron, I folded it lengthwise and pressed, and then I brought the two edges to that center line and then pressed again and now I have something that looks like this. Now I'm going to sandwich the bottom of the top and then just sew along to secure. Here's what the finished top looks like now. I'm so happy with how it fits. Here I have the zip on the side and that's what the back looks like. Now let's see what it looks like with the skirt. With my birthday coming up in two days, I'm feeling a little bit extra. So now that I've completed my nighttime look, I've decided that I obviously also need a daytime look. So in keeping with our young and trendy theme, I'm going to be upcycling this sparkly floor length number into something a little less dated. Just like the other dress, I also got this for $1 at the Goodwill. I actually really love the bottom half of this dress, but the top is just super dated and it's just not really flattering on me. I cannot believe I got this for $1. And yes, I'm sure you're all thinking, Tiffany, this is not a daytime dress. But hey, I feel like 2020 has basically no rules and I really want to wear this sparkly dress for my birthday breakfast at home. The game plan for this dress is going to be pretty simple. As you can see here, it is a little bit too short for me when I have heels on. So I'm going to be bringing it down so that the hem grazes the floor and then I'm going to drape the top so that it forms a cowl neckline. I just wanted to quickly clarify what I meant in case that didn't make any sense. So this is the original top and when I pull the shoulders closer together, it does create that drape. And this is a little rogue janky version of a cowl neck, just like the bias tape. Normally the fabric does have to be cut on the bias to create a drape, but this is what we have. So we're gonna work with it and we're gonna make the best of our situation. I also wanted to quickly mention that this is a pretty stretchy fabric. So by changing our neckline to a lower one, I think I can get rid of the zipper entirely. So I'm just gonna start off by seam ripping the lining from the top part of the dress and then removing the zipper. I then also seam rip the dress at the shoulder seams. Using my ruler as a guide, I use pins to mark a line between the far side of the shoulder seam to the center V. Repeat on the other side. 
Now cut along the line you just made. So I have the dress on right now and it actually turned out better than I thought it was going to be. It has a pretty nice drape. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pin this to my sports bra so that we can start working on the rest of the dress. Now I'm just going to pin this dress onto my sports bra along the side so that I can mark out a new side seam. So this right here is the original side seam and I've just shifted it over so that this dress is going to hug my body a little better. I'm also marking with a pin where I want the lowest point to be in the back. Now I'm going to pull the back tight so that it meets this new side seam and put a pin right there. Now that I have this side pinned, I'm just making sure that I have enough fabric to do the same on the other side. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this side out and then we're gonna match it to the other side. Here's what the dress looked like when I took it off. I just readjusted the pins to form a cleaner line. Then I realized I should have done this with the dress inside out, but I remedied that by making a handy little template with some printer paper. I cut out the template and made sure that it matched. Then I flipped the dress inside out. Using the template, I used pins to mark the new side seam. Repeat on the other side and sew your new side seams. Moving on to the back, here is the pin we used to identify the lowest point in the back. I'm going to create a curve from the side seam. I'm just going to go ahead and use some pins to mark and then cut. Fold this over and pin to secure. Finish cutting out the rest of the back. Cut your lining so it matches the new shape of the dress. Now I line up the shell and the lining making sure that they are right sides facing and pin all the way along the top. I've gone ahead and pinned the lining fabric to the shell fabric and now I'm going to sew all along the top except for these channels right here because this is where we're going to insert the straps later. Okay, so I was kind of low-key stressing about what I was going to do for the straps because this is literally all I have left and it's not long enough to make straps. But I found this cheeky little guy in my stash of trim and I think it's going to work perfectly for the straps. So I'm just going to insert them into the channels of the top that we left open, sew them down and then we're almost done. To determine the length of my straps, I put on the dress and then use a pin to mark the length that I need. Then, I seam rip a tiny hole between the shell and the lining in the center back. Using a safety pin, I feed the straps through the hole and then sew down to secure. Okay, last step, but it's a really important one. What we're gonna do is we're going to be sewing the lining to the seam allowance. This just ensures that when you have your garment on, the lining won't turn forward. This is the seam that joins the lining fabric and the shell fabric. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew on the lining super close to the seam, making sure that I catch the seam allowance on the back. So I'm gonna go all the way around the top, sewing as close as I can to this seam on the lining fabric. Just in case that didn't make any sense, as you can see here, my needle is on the right side of the seam and I'm just sewing on the lining as close as I can to the seam, making sure that I'm catching the seam allowance underneath. Once you finish this step, you're all done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up, comment and share this video. And as a birthday present to me, please, please, please vote. As always, thank you so much for watching.